Hi guys, welcome back to Anna Dialogue, the dialogue on analog music reproduction. In this episode, we're finally going to talk about tubes, thermionic tubes, vacuum tubes, also known as valves in the UK. Are you ready? Let's take a look. Okay guys, so today we're finally going to focus on tubes, oh yes. We're going to take a look at the 10 main aspects I think are worth knowing in order just to have a general knowledge and know how to handle, know what, know what to look for if you are interested or you're getting close to this world, to this new type of amplification. Okay guys, are you ready? Let's dive in. Okay, so point number one. Tubes were invented in 1904 by Fleming and they were used, employed mainly in early computers, we could say, and also amplification, as you can imagine, in order to regulate the flow of electrons thanks to the electrodes inside. It's very complex. There are very different kinds during the decades after that we're not going to go in that we're just going to focus on how to use them the best way what you need to do to get the maximum at a basic level introductory level so let's proceed point number two tube sound yes why are we dealing with this why am i doing this video because tubes valves do have a special type of sound. I mean, there is something uh, magical about them, but it's not only a matter of the so-called warmth, analog warmth, or uh, a distinct character. I mean, there's a lot of misconceptions around tubes, unfortunately. Uh, Pre-amplification mainly in tubes is something fantastic that I think every hi-fi geek needs to experiment at least once in a while. As I said once in one of my episodes dedicated to hi-fi myth mistakes, etc. Here's a link. Uh, tubes and obviously what came after transistors are always in the debate. Of which is best, how to put them together, which should go where, uh, power amplification, preamplification, etc. Well... Tubes do have a distinct character, but uh, there are a lot, as I said, misconceptions. For example, dynamics. A lot of people think that tubes are not able, capable, uh, dealing with that low voltage, <coughs> the, that low amount of, of watts, to give a good, distinct, dynamic range to the music. Well, actually, it's quite the opposite, almost. I mean, those little guys here do an amazing work when you give... A, a, a proper a source obviously but also a proper gear around it because there's so many crapola going around with tubes and you really need to to know what to look for now talking about preamplifiers uh, amplifiers dedicated to different kinds of components perhaps we're going to do that in another video today we're going to dedicate ex precisely to tubes so the tube sound is something as i said particular very, very distinct. Uh, actually, it is quite neutral if you have a proper system, a proper, uh, we could say, flow, how these are set up. They do not give that warmth or almost as a distortion. There is obviously some of that, but it's not as much as it has been claimed. I know this because I passed from a very good transistor amplifier to a very good, and we will see that in another video, uh, integrated amplifier, which obviously is based on tubes. And things changed, but they changed in a different way. I mean, it wasn't just better within the same scale. There was a natural reproduction of sound, mainly in the space, the air between instruments, between the different sounds in a recording, uh, the ambience, uh, the refinement of the micro detail, the, the timbers. I mean, every single aspect 
was delivered in a different way and in my most humble opinion in a more faithful way okay guys let's proceed point number three tube application obviously in audio well we're we're interested mainly in two types pre-amplification and that's the best of the best but also power amplification because all, as we all know you will probably have an integrated amplifier but a lot of people high-end uh, gears high-end systems have a pre-amplifier and a power amplifier in that delicate part where you have to the first part of the amplification of the signal tubes are paramount are very very good in doing that <clears throat> so that's where i highly suggest to focus if you do not have gear with based on tubes so a uh, headphone amplifier that's uh, a, a type of preamplifier but also a normal preamplifier in your stereo system uh, absolutely but also a phono preamplifier these are all excellent places where to start off with tubes to have to experiment the sound although you do need to have special gear not special gear but gear designed really where tubes are central and expressing fully themselves but we'll get back to this in another video as i said on gear okay let's proceed point number four tube life now this is a big issue actually uh, as you may know tubes do have a lifetime almost as a light bulb they don't last forever actually they don't even last that much if you have multiple tubes in your piece of gear like for example four or six in your preamplifier then each tube is going to last much longer because it's working at a lower rate instead if you have only like two one for channel they're working hard so obviously they're going to wear wear out much quicker usually it's hard to say it depends from the type it depends how much you listen to music it depends how long you leave your amplifier it depends how it's set inside in any case let's try to say that more or less a tube will last between one and two years which could be summed in 5,000, 10,000 hours more or less okay guys let's proceed point number five tube supply now that is also something interesting an issue sometimes where to get tubes what kind of tubes are there it's a past technology it's almost obsolete we could say if not for this high quality in music reproduction so we, we mainly have two big areas where we can head to buy our tubes because even though if you buy a component with its tubes already in sooner or later you're going to have to change those or if you want to experiment different kinds of sound but we'll get back to that at the end okay so um we have two main areas where we can buy tubes the new production which is not that big or the new old stock nos which i would say you can find them in several e um, stores online maybe to your local stores who knows which deals but deals with them but usually you really had to hit on ebay to find them at least that's what i do here in italy it's very very difficult to find them nobody has them so <clears throat> at that point you're probably going to start spending a little more if you're going for new old stock new old stock it's probably better because they were tubes are coming from a period where they were made to be good to last in the golden age of tubes obviously uh, while now we only have a few manufacturers who are, who are doing that and obviously as you can imagine like buying a new cassette player it's not going to be top of the tops although there are decent product pro products absolutely so i have a list here of the main uh resources the main places and the main brands i'm going to read them i don't know all of them by mine uh so let's see them let's start with the new old stock the golden age of tubes well what, what are the main areas of production and the main uh producers the main labels let's see so we have mainly American tubes, which were RCA, GA, Sylvania, Kenrad, Dumont, and Tungsol. Okay, these for America. Or the British Mullard. Well, I'm sorry if I'm butchering these names. As you know, I have them in my mind in Italian pronunciation, so I miss, 
I might mispronounce them. Sorry for that. So for the British ones, Mullard, Brimer, and Mazda. Uh, those are the main for the British. Also, we have Dutch, Amperex and Philips, but also the French RTC, and obviously the German Telefunken. These, we could say, are the tops of the top. Absolutely fantastic brands, fantastic products. While instead today, if you're going to start looking for new productions, there mainly are three areas. First of all, China, Shuangang, and we have a lot of brands and sub-brands there. Sino China, Shu Guanggang, Golden Dragon. Uh, they also rebrand Mesa, Ruby, TAD, Groove Tubes, PM Components, Valve Art, PV, Fender, and obviously much others. And these are all Chinese, which are good. Don't think Chinese equals crap. Chinese are good. Uh, they are good products. Not all of them, but they are good. Uh, obviously, there are much, much more brands, but I'm just telling you the main ones. Uh, the, the, another important location is in Europe, the Slovak Republic, mainly JJ Electronic, which does, again, a lot of brands and sub-brands, which does JJ, Telefunken Black Diamond, but it also rebrands Mesa, Ruby, TAD, Groove Tubes, PM Components, Valvart, Pavy, Fender, as the Chinese. They both do them. Then... The third big pole is, as you can imagine, Russia, which is doing a lot of good products, I would say. Mainly Reflector Car Corporation, which, again, they do a lot of brands and sub-brands. So, New Sensor, Electro Harmonics, Mollard Reissue, Tongue Soul Reissue, Softec, Genelex Gold, Lion, Svetlana, which are not the real Svetlana, and, and et cetera, et cetera. But these are just to give you a few names, which I'm going to write down here. And in the video description, you're going to find them all. Okay. Let's proceed. Point number six, tube matching. Oh, yes. This is something annoying, but you have to keep in mind. When you're buying tubes for your gear, they need to be matched. And in a lot of cases, they're just selling them out like that on the stores, etc. A matched tube is much, much better. If it's matched, it's going to express itself. We could say it's going to work in the optimal way together with the other one. So we have the same amount of power going through them and with the push-pull uh, response to what they're doing. So it's always a good idea to buy them matched. If they're two, if they're four, if they're eight. In fact, you're going to find, for example, on eBay or in stores, uh, quad or quartet or pair obviously or octet for eight like for example i have eight power uh, tubes in my amplifier it obviously when one goes bad you're gonna have to change them all if you really want to have optimum uh quality or you can measure all the other ones see at what point they are and find one at that point i know it's hard it's a tough world. It's a tough hobby. But these are things you got to know in order to, as I said, move around and know what you're doing with tubes. Okay. Together with this matching, sometimes I would suggest if you're really going to go in tubes, as you can imagine, there is a dedicated gear so you can test tubes, a tube tester. Um, there's also a new product called by Orange, the V1000, which is very cool. Obviously, it's not um, compatible with every single type of tube, but it does deal with a lot of them. So you can use that, for example. Otherwise, you can have to head to eBay or thrift shops or things like that to find these old testers, which are, are very cool, actually, which for a, a few hundred dollars, a few euro, hundred euro, you can find them. And at that point, you obviously need to learn how to use them, but you can test the tubes and see not only if they're good, but the exact type of um, voltage. At that point, you can match them with other tubes. That's the best of the best, because as I said, it's very important also to lower noise, distortion, um, to, to regulate the bias. We're going to talk about this in a while. It's very important. Again, I want to remark this matching tubes. Let's proceed. Point number seven, tube bias. I know this is kind of annoying, but you should regulate your pieces of gear and the, obviously the, the tubes 
with a correct bias, which means a, the proper flow of electrons, not too hot, not too cold, in order to have an optimum uh, playback, an optimum working of the machine. This has done mainly in two parts. First, you have to measure uh, the millivolts actually connected to each tube with a, a voltmeter, which sometimes it's 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 really hard to do if if they're not the uh, the, the correct the the proper little holes, the ground and the hot pole in order to see if uh, the, the how many millivolts are passing through those tubes. Not all amps, preamps have that. So maybe you're not going to be able subsequently with a screwdriver because you need to regulate the bias for each tube within a, um, a range which usually is indicated by the manufacturer. Like for example, I don't know, between four and five, you have to set all the tubes within that same range. Then they weren't going to work properly. Or you can buy a piece of gear which has auto bias, mm, like mine best of the best and that's much easy and it's obviously going to be uh, theoretically the best optimum bias for each tube i know this sounds difficult and in fact not all pieces of gear are capable of doing this so you have to check this okay guys let's proceed okay point number eight tube handling now you saw me touching this but this is a broken tube it's better if you never touch any part of the tube just use some toilet paper that's what i do or gloves or anything else that does not give you direct contact with the oils in your hands on the pins on the on the uh the glass any part because this does really get rarely really really hot and if there are oils residue oils on it it might crack the um, the glass or have issues also in the context so it's it's just a good idea to handle it in a spe that specific way as i tell told you um another important aspect is because it, it might seem something obvious to everyone who is already dealing with tubes but if you're a newbie you really don't know how to do this what am i talking about how to insert them and take them out of components which really it's it's sometimes almost scary because they're really hard to take them out. It's it's hard to insert them and uh, take them out. Just as I said, take a piece of paper and if you're inserting them, you just follow the holes according to the number of pins, how they are displayed. You put them in and you gently but firmly press them down. Obviously, a good idea is to jerk them a little bit like that. In the same way, when you want to extract them, the best solution is to start jerking them like this, slowly, slowly, uh, 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 and then they're gonna come out quite easily, actually. If you don't do that and you start pulling, you might break something, actually. So, be careful. Let's proceed. Point number nine, tube warm-up. Yes, you have to, it's better. I mean, I just turn them on and put my records or whatever I'm using. But obviously, you're going to have the maximum result, at least, I would say, 20, 30 minutes, even more sometimes, after you turn them on. Uh, after that time, the, the tubes are nice and warm, and the music is gonna, really going to start to sing. Uh, there, I know people who start turning them on even an hour earlier, so it depends. It depends e even from your ears. You test it, you see when you have the, the pinnacle of sound reproduction, the best quality. Then you can know that if you're gonna do a listening session you just want to enjoy some music with tubes i would say you turn them on you go and do something else and then you come back or you just start listening who cares that's what i do as well no problem with that let's proceed okay our last point point number 10 tube rolling what's tube rolling it ain't this tube rolling is what you when you want to start to have fun with them yes you want to experiment uh, maybe the sound is becoming dull. Maybe you just don't like the tubes you got. Maybe you don't like the ones already put installed in it when you bought your piece of gear and you want to try something new. It's a good idea. Just buy them off the internet, match them, get a match, or you match them by yourself if you have the possibility, as I told you before. And at that point, try new types. Obviously, you always have to look at the type of tube you're dealing with like for example the 12 uh, au i don't know or the aca8 
Uh, there's so many types. You don't have to get that precise type, although it's better. I recommend to do that. But if you look around in the, in the, in the, in, in the web, you will find that, for example, one type equal is equal to another three or four types. And you can buy those and put them in. No problem. Obviously, though, you, you have to remember the uh, where you're using them for a preamplifier or for a power amplifier or obviously there are also other applications where you can use tubes but we're we're dealing mainly with those so just be careful of that and enjoy tube rolling because it is fun to, actually different pieces of gear really reach their maximum potential with the right type of tube i for example uh, got my uh, new pre -phone, phone preamplifier. I'm not going to tell you which one. Maybe in a new video. And the I, I changed the stock tubes. I put something very good, new old stock. Not that good, actually. I put back the ones that the producer put in. Per perfect. So, so in some cases, you just go back where you were. You, you discover that the ones you already had were better. Who knows? Okay, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please write in the comments your suggestions if there are other practices you want to highlight that I didn't discuss about. Which are your favorite tubes? What pieces of gear with tubes you have? If you are using this, if you know this world, if you're interested, I am interested in knowing. Okay, guys, remember that music is born analog and never forget that. And tubes are the quintessential of this aspect. Goodbye.